So hello and welcome back to the channel. It's been a very long time, obviously three weeks away and we're going to be taking a look at some of the footage I've taken over the past three weeks. I've been working away in Sweden on this new wind farm venture. <coughs> um, so yeah, obviously you're all aware that I've been away from the channel for quite some time. I guess we we'll can look back at the start. Obviously the last day before leaving um, to go on this three week journey departing from Manchester Airport Terminal 1 and flying across passing Denmark into um, Stockholm uh, a very late flight in the evening as well probably landing in Stockholm um, midway through the evening one in the morning something like that collecting the van and then driving into Stockholm to do um, quite a physical medical um, right here in the centre a very nice city indeed um, lots of very um, interesting architecture um, very hard trying to find somewhere to park a massive van as well um, but then driving nearly eight hours north um, to a little village called Tullingsas uh, where it's staying in a little hostel there and then a little bit further north was where the wind farm was in a little village or in the wind park called Havnas but the journey up there was uh, really interesting um, especially as you started to hit the more northern sector uh, end up staying at a very a little B&B here with this lovely little dog that was welcoming <laughs> a lovely little character beautiful little face on him but yeah, just stayed here for the one night and then I was travelling uh, a little bit further the next morning uh, to collect my work partner. Very basic accommodation. Um, I forget how much I paid for it. It's probably about 45 euros. Um, but not a single curtain. And in a an area of the world where it doesn't particularly go dark on an evening, um, it was very hard to get some sleep, but yeah, the next morning, um, this was where I was meeting uh, the rest of the team. And I'd love to say that the PP was provided on day one, but unfortunately this was the second day before I actually got any PP, <coughs> uh, personal protective equipment. But driving to site each morning, the vastness of the landscape here in Sweden is just so apparent you really don't see anybody on these journeys and as we sort of drive into the the main park itself it's literally um we have these national park walks in the uk that are pretty boring along these little gravel tracks um just lined with trees either side i'd say this is probably very similar but the vastness of the landscape that you're looking at is really is tremendous um, just a huge area of trees as we're arriving at the only wind turbine that I actually worked on for the whole three weeks and just one blade for that whole length of time. So looking on the inside of the turbine obviously we've got a lift, a very very long ladder which I only climbed the once and you see I've just got a little bit of um, coverage for the company that I was working for I'm not allowed to show any um, logos or whatnot. I'll not divulge anything about the company that I was working for while I was there but as you can see the ropes rigged right from the very top and the little section that you can see actually on the blade that's covered is the area that we're working on. <coughs> We've just um, covered that while uh, something was setting but yeah obviously you can see it's a considerable height and this was the second team member that I was working with. The first week didn't go particularly well maybe through a lack of experience um, from the guy I was working with but the second two weeks definitely went much better as you can see in the distance we've got another team working and it just gives you a, a, an idea of the scale of a man on these uh, massive structures but as you can see beautiful scenery um, a, a re really huge area of landscape just covered in pine trees and I, I guess there were some happy times but it's not particularly um, three weeks that I'll look at back on with fond memories. <coughs> um, 
But yeah, a, a stark reality change and my personal disclaimer into the wind turbine industry um, is it's not for everybody. I know there's a lot of people out there that will disagree with me that it's a, a brilliant way to work and they're all for it. But personally for me, I really didn't enjoy it. And obviously I'll get into why during the video, um, but it's not for everybody and I can understand that um, it's my personal view so let's get on with it obviously you can see working away here uh, no um, protection on the tools all the guards have been taken away which was something I wasn't particularly happy with and obviously you can see there's no use of rope protection hard links whilst using this sort of equipment it comes so close to just um, touching your ropes and it's gone so I've implemented this little bit of pipe around the rope you see it's still working although we've got goggle um, masks on to stop any particles or um, vapors he's still not even wearing any glasses to protect his eyes here and this is fiberglass that we're working with it's literally dust glass dust so getting that in your eyes not really a great idea but we're just, <coughs> or my friend here is just um, preparing a surface to apply more fiberglass to. You see we've got a lot of equipment in and about us. Um, a lot of equipment is needed for these jobs, it really is. You can see I'm wearing my own eye protection. I, I did have goggles on at some point. I'm not even doing any of the work here at all either. Um, <clears throat> so yeah it was a bit a bit of an eye opener to see the way they were working here and we obviously we've just got this heat blanket on here just setting uh, the compound which is underneath uh, we did end up coming back to this having spent the first week doing the first the same job and it was a failed repair really so I'm returning with a new team leader we just stripped everything off that we'd done the previous week because uh, it just didn't set properly but you can see all like the internal sections the resins um, to apply the uh, fiberglass and you can see he's sporting this lovely um, midgy sort of mosquito protection the flies were terrible on some days but having inserted the core into this section we're just sanding it this is probably about three hours of sanding to get it to kind of this this kind of stage so it's just a huge amount of time using vibrating equipment which wasn't logged anywhere as to how much time you were spending using it and then obviously applying um, another fiberglass coat on top of that so is it just a huge amount of stuff and then you've got a filler section that goes on top of that and then that's then sanded down probably another two three hours sanding to get it to this stage just a huge amount of time spent in the harness and sanding hours at a time maybe four or five hours at a time sat in the harness and it it really is a very long time to be sat in a harness so here we are then on the top of a of a wind turbine just looking up the blades there and see the ropes i've just got rigged behind me we'll just have a little walk around show you around a little bit um obviously you can see i'm just here in sweden uh, i've got the ropes just running over the edges here we're going to abseil down either side and eventually we'll swing around the blade just to work on one side but as you can see we've got a few bolts and things the ropes generally don't touch those um, but the rope protectors are still there just in case and you can see I've just got an anchor point onto the rail that goes all the way around so we'll just uh, move inside I'll show you a few bits and pieces Just sling myself around and drop through this hatch. So 
So here we are again. A little bit of a different view. Um, I'm not sure I'll be pursuing <coughs> um, blade repair, to be quite honest. There's a lot of time you spend actually in the harness, maybe five, six hours sat in the harness, which can, which can be really uncomfortable. Um, especially as you get, I guess as you get older, you tend not to want to be sat in the harness for that sort of length of time. Maybe these young guys, it seems like second nature for them. And the, the work is really strict. It's very, you have to be very precise with the work that you're doing. Um, and a lot of the time you're coming back and redoing the repairs um, just to make sure that they've been done properly. There's tiny corners people are cutting. Um, but yeah, I, d I don't think I don't think it's for me personally. The height's not really an issue. Obviously, I've been doing this job for a long time now, uh, working in rope access, so that's not really the problem. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we're lo looking at the ropes. Obviously, there's a lot of rope protection. Um, trying to avoid sharp edges. Obviously, you've got bolts here. Um, there's no sharp edges there really at all. Uh, but obviously when the ropes are under tension, they just don't touch those, these things anyway. As you drop inside as well, you see <coughs> um, we've got no real need for any rope protection here. You've got quite a distance and this rope's never gonna move like this. It's just gonna be static like that all the time. Um, I have got a rope protector on this one, but you really don't need it at all. And then that goes back to um, some solid anchor points. You're never gonna be pulling this, the whole gear, gear sh assembly. You see you've got the whole shaft of the gearbox. My mate's just at the moment, he's just spinning the nacelle. This is, the, the whole area here is called the nacelle, um, where everything's housed. And then you've got this ram that's just down here. Um, that we use to lock the blades in place so that they don't rotate while we're working and the pins j just go down through here they actually go through like this these holes to stop the blade from turning and we control that from up here no one can mess with that at all but it'll isolate the whole thing downstairs on the ground um, I'll just remove those for the minute I'm, I'm wearing a balaclava because it does get quite cold up here. Obviously, it's almost like a different climate as you come up. But the, the, I think the air temperature is probably about 13 degrees today. It was quite cold yesterday, probably about 6 degrees yesterday. But we have had some hot days, like 20-odd degrees. Um, so I'll just move around a little bit to show you. It's, it's quite narrow everywhere getting through to the back of the nacelle and you've got this is this is like the access hatch that you come up it's quite a tight gap and then the stairs the stairs lead you down to a lift that comes all the way up the center shaft so once I'm through this hatch we're into like this little hub the very top where the whole nacelle can rotate round and then this is just like the little access hatch that we're going to climb up. This ladder's just dropped down and then I'll make my way up there. So this is the lift we come up and down in. Just at the very top. I'm just going to close that. And then I'll just climb the rest of the way up here. This is the morning view. So finally we're here looking outside uh, from the hotel. Not too bad on a Sunday morning just to enjoy uh, a relaxing day away from doing any work, sitting in the harness and give the body a chance just to recover. So really did enjoy the Sunday I was off. 
So back in the van Monday morning, heading back to work, a nice beautiful day. Really do like the scenery, these little um, villages that we pass through on our way to work. Um, lots of land available with each building. Really is quite nice to see how far apart some of the houses are spaced. Although we are coming into quite a populated area. So the view from the, the main village. Top of the tower is pretty spectacular today. Sun shining. A really nice day out here today. Kind of makes you enjoy it on days like today but the work's still just relentless. Um, yeah, I guess we're just taking each day at a time, but yeah, looking forward to getting back home. Um, not much more to say, really. Every day feels like a groundhog day. Come back up, set up all the ropes, drop down, do a repair, pull the ropes back up. It's just the same thing, day in, day out. I think rope access can be far more varied. But yeah, it is what it is. It's paying the wages while I'm here. But yeah, it's, uh, I guess it's an unfortunate experience to have been out here doing this job and to find it wasn't really what I was expecting. So back in the harness, we're going to be using this suction pump um, during the repair causes like a vacuum whilst you're um, allowing the um, resin underneath to set. A very lot of setting up goes involved into doing this so you really only want to do it once and if it doesn't um, work there's a lot of time in getting it back to this stage yet again. So spend a lot of time taking photographs, uh, writing out um, cards as to varying stages of the work and you just take a picture of that card and it's just like a, a proof that you've done the stages that are required uh, during the process of repairing the blade I guess. So once the uh, resin's all set it sets really hard and it's just a few millimeters thicker than it what it needs to be uh, when you apply it and then we're going to spend the next hour or so sanding it down, getting it as smooth as possible so that when we come to paint it you can barely s distinguish between um, the levels of paint. Uh, but it certainly needs to be a certain thickness. I'm not sure exactly what that thickness was. We do measure it through the stage of painting and then this is the final product really happy with the work that we've done to get it to this stage. Um, a very even surface, a very smooth surface, a nice finish on the paint. And a lot of work over the last week gone into getting it to that stage. You see just in the distance the other closest tower with another um, van there. So again we're just taking a, a wind speed measurement using the ammometer. Uh, just going to look at moving down to start our next repair on the same blade and we're just checking whether the wind speed at the lower level is going to be within limits to continue. We'll just use a ratchet strap there to hold the ropes in place so that we've got a little bit of purchase on the blade when we're pressing on it, it's not pushing us away too quickly. Obviously we'll do a lot of a lot of tidying around as well, <coughs> just to get the area clean alongside where we've been working. And again, more pictures taken to prove uh, the work that we've been done, or that's been done, the date it's been done, the wind speeds, etc. So here I am then, two weeks into this blade repair trip over in Sweden. Um, I'm not sure I've mentioned that already, I'm sure I have. Obviously there's a lot of people back home, um, I guess looking at, we're well, looking at Assetto Corsa Competizione and um, obviously version 1.9, really looking forward to getting back home and doing some testing with 1.9. Um, lots of people reporting issues, um, 
obviously I don't know anything about them until I get home so really interested to see where the game's developed. Obviously a while ago I was having issues, um, lower back issues, probably from spending a lot of time in the rig, a lot of um, anxiety, anticipation towards coming out on this trip, wanting to be 100% physically fit. Obviously I know it's very demanding, I had a very demanding medical arriving here in Sweden, it's called the Maston Pole, so I really do put you through um, like an ECG machine, very hard slog on the bike, just trying to get your heart rate up to absolute maximum. Uh, I think I managed 88%, uh, which the guy told me was really good uh, for my age, um, being 46. Um, but yeah, I guess coming out on this job has been more of like a, an eye opener for me as to how different things are done in different parts of the world. I probably will have another go at blade repair uh, over in the UK. Um, the safety um, procedures probably very different to what they are here. Uh, there's a lot of things that seem to be overlooked here I guess, which just wouldn't be the case in the UK, I know that for sure. Uh, maybe I'll do another trip offshore, put some money back in the bank. Um, I'm having quite a bit of work done at my own home at the minute, solar panels and um, air source heat pumps going in, trying just to get more energy efficient in my own home. Obviously trying to change career to do something a little bit more energy efficient as well, maybe more long term um, planning for the future kind of. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been interesting. I certainly enjoy the week, especially when you get time off on the Sundays. Really enjoyed yesterday's British Grand Prix. Brilliant performance from Lando and um, Hamilton. Um, slightly disappointing for Piastri not to pick up that third place. Um, obviously, you can never really control uh, when a safety car comes out, but really good to see two British drivers up there on the podium. Obviously, along with Max. Max is kind of growing on me a little bit more this season. I've never been a real fan of Max Verstappen, but I think as he's maturing, he's getting um, a little bit more um, grown up, I guess. <clears throat> but yeah, hopefully you enjoy this video. Probably very different to what I'm usually putting out on the channel. But for all those younger guys out there that are probably wondering what to do with their, their career, where to go in life, um, maybe planning for the future. Um, an exciting career, obviously you travel the world as well, I guess. Um, depends what you're wanting to do with your life, whether blade repair, rope access is something that you'd ever even consider. Um, but yeah, as for now, hopefully looking forward to leaving on Sunday. Um, so I'll have the long drive back to Stockholm Sunday afternoon and hopefully a flight Sunday night across to the UK. So back to work then, looking down from these uh, beautiful landscapes, back at our next project, just trying to uncover uh, what kind of damage has been done on here. I think this is down to ice falling off the, the nose cone and just hitting the blade on the way down. <coughs> it causes some small fractures and then we're just trying to re reveal the extent of the damage underneath really. Uh, a painstaking task just trying to find the extent of the damage and how big the repair is going to be. So as you can see we're a little bit further down the blade, you can see the repair that we've done a little bit further up. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of time using these vibrating tools. You can see the works very diligent. So here I am then. It's the last day on the job. And we're working, we're going to be working uh, right on the very blade tip. i try and, yeah, yeah, right on the blade tip. So the wind speed needs to be a little bit lower than normal if you were working a little bit further up the blade, somewhere around here maybe be all right I think about 12 meters per second but all that detail is all in the um, 
the control panel downstairs. Uh, but yeah, definitely um, a new, maybe not a newfound appreciation for maybe what I want to do with the rest of my life. I think at 46 years old, I'm still trying to figure out where my speciality lie, what, what is going to inspire me to want to go to work every day. And I think this has been a, a huge question whilst on this project. What I want to do with the rest of my life. You never really contemplate reaching nearly 50 years old thinking, what am I going to do when I grow up? <laughs> but I guess as you get older, the body starts to not want to do so much physical activity daily. As much as I'm probably pretty fit as I am, I, I guess I've got to reach that point where doing something physical isn't going to be in my, my daily activities to you know enjoy the rest of my life feeling physically fit. Um, so yeah, lots to think about from this trip. Um, really looking forward to travelling home tomorrow. Um, a long drive down to Stockholm, another six or eight hour drive. Um, but hopefully I'll start that maybe five, four or five a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, just to enjoy the, the scenery on the drive down. It never actually goes dark here, so it's probably like, it's almost like, looks like a sunset at the darkest it ever gets. But beautiful skies today. Looking forward to just getting down, doing a bit of work today. We've had a couple of days off with bad weather. Um, all the cloud formation over here was horrible yesterday. Really dark clouds, lots of rain in the distance that eventually came across to us here and probably packed away around midday. But enjoyed a few days, just relaxing, maybe doing a bit of training back at the um, hotel. But yeah, looking forward to getting home. So hopefully you've enjoyed this slightly different video, a look into the world of wind turbines. And hopefully getting back to doing some sim racing. Really looking forward to seeing what's in store with 1.9. And just just enjoying being at home. So finally back on the road home Sunday morning, maybe 5 a.m. And you can see just how quiet these roads are. If you were a courier, this would be your absolute dream. Heading a little bit further into the countryside then and you can see it's just trees after trees after trees. No real neighbours to contend with. Obviously we had a bit of wet weather and it was a wet weather drive literally the full eight hours home really. Passing through a lot of um, areas that are um, I guess bridged from one little section of land to the next but absolute ghost town maybe 6 a.m. in the morning 7 a.m. and I, I don't feel like I passed a single person walking in the street um, for the first three to four hours of my drive a very surreal experience just to see nobody and then finally reaching the airport and enjoying a packet of marabou peanuts and then eventually onto the flight and back home but I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully we'll get on to something a little bit more um, simulator related in the next video and see what 1.9's got to offer. Thanks for watching as always guys, thanks for your support in the channel and for the messages whilst I've been away, really are appreciated. Ciao for now.